Hey, good to see you. And thanks for joining me for this video. So this video is going to be on forging an integral knife without a press. But full disclosure, I am not going to do the whole thing by hand because it sucks. <laughs> but uh, I'll do the important parts by hand and then show you how I do them. So I'm going to work with this piece of Damascus, this uh, Twisted W's Damascus that I made. Uh, I need to get rid of this part on here. That's already been kind of drawn out and squared up for another knife. So I'll cut this off before I, I get going on this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of round this up, smash it down to get rid of some of these, some of these uh, uh, edges or some of these peaks and valleys on here. Uh, that way, you know, we don't have to worry too much about that when we start drawing it out. So the first thing we really need to talk about is hammers. So I think this is the type of hammer that most people have, uh, a flat and then a rounding hammer. This will work fine, but it's harder to get your width that you want. Like if you want a really wide blade, it's harder to get that when you have just a rounding hammer. So what you really want to do is get a, a peen hammer. So I've got a straight peen and a cross peen here. This cross peen is a, a Bailey hammer. And then this is one that I made. And it's actually the one that I probably use the most for just general stuff. But uh, in case you don't know, when you're referring to a straight peen, you're referring to the fuller portion of it running straight with the handle. If you're referring to a cross peen, you, the fuller section of it's going to be running cross the handle or perpendicular. So both of these are nice to have, really just depending on how you're going to be striking the material. So when we draw out the material, the first thing we want to do is isolate where the bolster is going to be. And then we want to take our fuller of our peen and hit it crossways so that it will stretch the material this direction. So if I hit it this way, it's going to move the material that way. If I was to hit it this way, it would move the material that way. And then a rounding hammer just basically pushes the material all directions, it's sort of like a flat but the rounding is just more aggressive. So it's good to have different kinds of hammers just for different things. The other thing you can do is I made this little fullering tool to go in the hardy hole of my anvil. And I know a lot of people will put the fuller area of it right at the hardy hole, but the mass of the anvil is up here. So I made it so the hardy hole would hold it and then the fuller area would be up where the mass of the, the anvil is. So with all this information I'm gonna go stoke up the forge, get this heated up, uh, get this taken off of here, get this heated up and then I'll kind of show you all these tools in use. So this piece of steel is almost hot and the first thing I want to do is show you what the cross peen is going to do. So we're going to pretend like this is the billet. So we want to isolate where the tang is going to be. So we have to determine how much steel we need to get the length we want and the width and all that. So let's say that we're going to isolate right here. So we're going to hold this at the edge of the anvil and use this cross peen to hit this way, like this, to get this material to expand this way. Once you have your width, then you don't really need to worry about the hammer or the cross peen anymore. Because once you have the width, then you can thin it out and draw out the length. 
So we'll just isolate about right here. So this is gonna be the bolster going this way. And so we just need to start hitting this way. If I can hit this right. To draw out our width. Boy, I'm wobbly today. And as you can see, we're basically fullering this and we're widening it instead of lengthening it. And then you want to work even on both sides. That way you keep your bolster in the middle. You can already see just by working this side, let's put a divot that way and we're kind of flat over here. So I'll rotate it keeping the isolated part at the edge of the anvil and start working this side. We're gonna give this another heat. So all you're gonna do is just keep heating this up. And using your cross beam to draw width, and then you're just gonna keep rotating it. To try to keep everything centered. And you have to be really careful not to hit your bolster area. You can hit it a few times, but if you hit it too much, it's gonna smash it down and then you're not gonna have the width to keep your integral bolster on there. So as you're drawing width, if you'll notice you're bulging on both sides of here. And of course, we don't want that unless you're making a dagger. So what you need to do is as you're doing this, you need to push this bolster back down toward where the spine is gonna be. If you wait until the very end to do it, it's gonna be really hard to get this whole bolster from the middle all the way to the edge. So as you're doing it, also work on pushing that bolster down to the spine side of the knife. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this onto the anvil this way, and I just start hitting the bolster until you get that pushed down to the spine side. And again, you only want to hit the bolster and not where your blade is going to be because if you hit the blade and you put a dent, you have to redraw it and you're going to lose the, the length that you're after or the width that you're after. Okay. So we're just going to keep working on this. Draw width, flip it, draw width. Heat it back up, draw width, flip it, draw width, and then push your bolster to the spine side of the knife. I want to show you this other tool. This is my fullering tool that I made. So, like I was saying, most people will put their hardy uh, hole, their one inch square up here. And so basically what it does is it puts the, the fullering, the, like where you hammer, clear back here where there's no mass and not only is it loud but it just uh, it's not as efficient so I put this back here to drag where you hammer up where all the mass is so it's a little more efficient I probably could have designed this a little better but it works all right so the purpose of this is so that you eliminate the chance to miss hit and smash your bolster so I usually use this when I get closer to the end. 
and I'm gonna grab my big hammer. So basically you'll slide this right in here. And just start smashing away like that. And again, you've gotta rotate this. And basically, that's going to do the same thing as hitting here, except you don't have you don't run the risk of smashing your bolster and losing your mass on your bolster. Okay, now that I've got quite a bit of width on this, one thing I have to watch out for is pulling material in other places you need it. So right here where the heel of the blade is going to be, it's too rounded. I need to pull some of this material back this way. So I'm going to use my cross peen to hit it in this direction to get some of that material to pull back like this. So I'm just going to turn this on the anvil and start hitting it this direction to get some of that material pulled back into the heel. But we need another heat before I can really be forging. So put this on the anvil, spin it a little bit, start pulling some of that material down to me. just to rotate it so you keep everything centered. So as you can see, we pulled that material down here. The next thing I want to do is we still have a ton of thickness here that we have to bring down, but I want to start shaping this knife. That way we have a better idea of where we're at, the thickness, uh, the width, the length, all that, all that good stuff. So I'm going to heat this back up and start actually forging a point into this and seeing where we go from there.
So now that we have basically a shape, which is definitely going to get refined. You'll notice that the bolster is in the middle and we still have plenty of thickness. So from this point, it's just going to be taking down the thickness, getting the width where it needs to be, and then drawing this out and shaping it as you go. Once we get that all done, then we can work on getting the bolster cleaned up just a little bit and then the tang isolated and cut off and drawn out. So as of now, it's just a balancing act between all this different stuff. realized I really don't know exactly what I'm making um, I, I'm kind of liking this like a really short chef knife uh, so I might just refine this a little bit and leave it like that but I do have thickness to work with if I wanted to lengthen it and all that stuff but I actually think this is kind of cool so I might keep it more or less so if you haven't noticed at this point, the whole secret to doing an integral is to not let any aspect get out of control. So when you're drawing it out, you don't want to leave, you know, get too much on each side of the bolster before you move it back. You want to keep on top of moving that bolster back to the, the, the edge of, or the spine of the knife. And then once you get to a certain point, you got to make sure you're pulling your heel down so you have enough material there. You want to make sure that you start shaping at a certain point while still working on thinning down and, and, and all, that, all that stuff with the knife. So basically you just have to keep on top of every aspect, not let anything get too far gone before you have to fix it. And if you keep up on that stuff, it's going to be really easy for you. So. I'm gonna do a little more refining on this and then uh, cut this off and show you how to isolate the tank. You've got a couple different options with cutting this off. You can let it cool and cut it off with a uh, angle grinder or you can hot cut it. Or if you have a press, you can cut it off that way. I will show you how to do it with a hot cut and of course you have to be careful doing it this way so you just have to figure out how much you need and then just start cutting and you have to be really careful not to hit your bolster because if you do then you've just screwed yourself So anyway, just keep doing this. I'm probably gonna have to heat this up again. Just keep doing this till you've cut all the way through. Uh, 
I'll just throw this back in the forge so we can isolate that. Well, let's straighten this up a little bit. All right, then we just have to isolate the bolster. Essentially, where we are is right back to step one. So you need to isolate this bolster in the other direction on this side so that you can basically do this same exact thing on the front but on the back. And then once you've done that, then you can draw out the tang And this is a big old bolster. Better to have too much than too little. Okay, I'm just making a square here. Let me heat this up again. Right, so you've got to take this, you've got to hold this on the side of your anvil where you want it, and you just have to start working that bolster down on each side. This part takes a little bit of time. You just have to be really careful because you've come this far without screwing up your bolster. You don't want to screw it up now. So basically that's it. You just got to go with this until you've pulled that tang out. Now the easy way is to use the butcher blocks that you might have if you have a press. And that's going to really speed things up. So. I'll show you that option as well because that's where I'm headed right now. So here, so here we've got the butcher block. And you can see that we're angled down with a kind of a sharper point. And what that's gonna do is basically isolate the bolster for me. It's going to cut right where I want it and push my material out. So figure out where we need this. Come up here. Cut that way. Cut that way. And then you can see we have a nicely isolated bolster right there. Beautiful. You can use the press to finish it up or you can come over here, use the hammer to draw out this tank. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. This is essentially just a very small chef. It looks like it's gonna be about five inches or so. And there'll be some refining on the grind, but as you can tell, this wouldn't be any sort of brute to forge. It's really ugly as far as the foraging goes. But the main points is we have plenty of thickness here for our grinding. The bolster's plenty big to do some grinding on it. And then uh, plenty of tang. Everything's centered and straight. So we've set ourselves up uh, really well for the next steps. So 
the takeaway from this is you just got to keep everything under control. You can't do too much of one thing without addressing another, you know, like, uh, when you're, when you're drawing out your width, you got to make sure to keep that bolster pushed back towards the spine, or you're just going to make it difficult on yourself when it comes time to actually move that. So if you just, you know, make sure everything's centered, work both sides of the, of the blade, and you know draw material in the direction you need it like we did with the heel and you know just keep everything under control you're going to have a lot better results when it actually comes down to finishing this blade so i really hope this helped you guys like i said i didn't do it all by hand I know this is a hand forging video, but I mean, if you have the means, use the tools you have. If you're actually trying to decide what your next big tool purchase is going to be, I would sincerely recommend a, a press. They're just super versatile in almost everything you do when it comes to forging, and it just makes life a lot more simple. So anyway... Hope this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer. And we'll see you in the next video on the grinding.